Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm slowing things down a bit and I'm focusing more on how I solve the compositional problem when I'm working on a sketch for a new piece. And I know I say this all the time, but figuring out compositions, that is one of my favorite things when I'm working on pieces. I certainly have a long way to go before I feel like I just have a total handle on how to do compositions and I know how to make it work the way that I want it to and how to balance it out. But I will say that it is incredibly satisfying to be able to work on something that either I start off not having any idea how I want the composition to flow or working on something where I know the composition has problems and then being able to fix that and work on it until it gets to the point that it has the flow and the impact that I want it to have. So, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in and talk a little bit about one of the ways that I think about it and a lot of the things that I think about and fix as I'm working on a sketch to make the composition flow the way that I want it to. So this video is going to be broken up into two parts. The first part is where I'm basically doing a speed paint of getting from the beginning to the end composition or the almost end composition. And then at the very end, I'm going to basically just live talk through some of the things that I put into the composition to make sure that it has the flow that I want. So we'll get down to the nitty gritty things that I'm thinking about and trying to fix with that final one. But for the first part, we can just watch the sketch happen. One of the things or the tools that I love using when it comes to balancing out a composition or using as the one of the main compositional elements is actually hair. I love drawing hair. I love painting hair. So it's naturally something that I tend to gravitate towards when I need something to feel a little bit more grounded. I can add a little bit more hair that flows in a certain way or breaks the frame in a certain place so it can balance out other elements. So that is one thing that right off the bat, I'm, I'm sketching out and seeing how I want it to flow because I know that I want certain elements to break the frame of the piece basically where I want it to continue on beyond the frame that we have applied for this piece. So. I'm putting that down at first and at the beginning here I'm not really sure exactly how her clothing is going to flow or if it's actually going to break the edge of the canvas on the bottom end but the more that I'm working on the hair and the more that I'm pushing and pulling with how much of the the edge of the piece it's breaking the more I'm deciding on how I want to solve the clothing problem so I, I do a lot of different things with her clothing I actually end up cutting quite a bit of it out because it's a lot of just trial and error of seeing what things flow the way I want it to and which ones don't. But ultimately I end up working in a way where it can flow and have a lot of surface area of the, of the dress breaking the edge, the bottom edge of the piece. And then at the top, her hair is a very concentrated piece that's breaking a small section of the, the frame. And that is, like I said, it's kind of a process. I go through a lot of different phases where I'm working on having the hair have more area devoted to it. And I also work on certain compositions where the clothing has less and it's just a give and take. But that is one of my favorite things. Like I said, is just ebbing away at certain areas and seeing how it affects the other areas of the piece. And that really is what composition is all about is that when you change one part on one piece, that weight that it had or now has or doesn't have anymore affects how the rest of the piece has weight. So if you put a lot of weight, and I say weight because it's actually kind of interesting that, that visually elements can feel heavy or feel light, but, but if I put something that has a lot of mass to it really close to the edge of the picture without something at the top to balance it off, then it's going to feel really bottom heavy. So for this kind of approach, if I had put all this clothing mass right on the bottom of the piece and it was mostly balanced out as far as where she's positioned within the piece and then I didn't have something breaking the edge at the top, it would feel really bottom heavy. Now, a few solutions to that is having something really sharp and impactful breaking the edge or having a lot of weight at the top. And then that way it feels anchored down and then it has a lot of weight at the bottom, but it's anchored at the top. So it feels, it feels comfortable to look at and like it's balanced, but it's also asymmetrical. And that is where it creates a very interesting composition. But I can also 
balance it out by playing with the negative space around the figure and how much space I leave at the top as opposed to the bottom, which has a lot of weight to it. So there are a lot of solutions for the same problems, which is again, one of the things that I love about compositions is that there's not one right answer, which means when you're feeling like you're in a rut of repeating the same kinds of compositions, you're using the same kind of tools and you're ending up with the same composition is that you can take those problems and force yourself to approach it in a completely different way. If you feel like you're using that same attack plan, you can take those tools away from yourself and then force yourself to think of a new alternate route to get to that, that end result. Okay, now it's finally time for the slowed down explanation part of this video. So first things first, as you can see on my Photoshop document, there's these really bright blue lines and those are guidelines. And this is really easy to put into Photoshop. All you have to do is go to, uh, let's see if I can remember, <laughs> view new guide layout, and then you select that. And then you just choose to have three rows and three columns. And the reason that I have it this way is it helps me to immediately see the rule of thirds on my piece. And what that is, is very basically where if you were to draw lines that segmented your piece into three equal sections, both horizontally and vertically, and then you look at the points that they intersect. So there's four points about in the middle of your piece. Those are very good places to put your focal points on because the eye naturally likes to gravitate to that point on a piece that feels really comfortable. So I always have those guidelines up when I'm sketching now because it helps me to give a little bit more framework to the sketches as I'm working on them and see a little bit better where I want them to be placed. So for this piece, as you can see, her face is pretty close to one of the rule of thirds. Actually, her eye is directly or almost directly on one of those points, which is one of those things that visually we love to look at eyes first. That's kind of hard, hardwired into our brains to look at eyes and faces first. So putting her eye right on that focal point, it'll make sure that when a viewer is looking at this piece, that has a lot of impact and that's what I want. And then on the other point across from that, that's where there's, it's, it's a little bit less precise, but I do have her hands and her hair and a little bit of negative space in between. And those places are still important. So that's kind of a secondary area for the eye to focus on, but that main focal point is still her face and it's still hitting that point for the rule of thirds. Anyways, moving on, I, like I talked about a little bit earlier, I have her hair as a really condensed shape that breaks the the top plane of this picture but because it's very central or almost center in this piece it has a lot more weight to it and then on the bottom i have a lot of her dress but it's covering all of the bottom and a little bit of the sides so because it's like the spread out mass it has a lot of weight to it but there's a lot of impact as far as having that singular strand of hair. So it helps it feel a little bit more tethered and balanced. I also wanted to have these wolf footprints in the snow around her, but they're going to be very light in value. So they kind of break a little bit the overall composition, or it doesn't really break it, but it distracts a little bit from it. So I knew going into that, that they would need to be a very low contrast element, kind of a second read but the areas that I wanted to have a lot of contrast needed to be focused on where I wanted that to be the, the focal point. I wanted it to have a lot of visual weight. So I have her horn inked in pretty dark. I don't know if it'll end up that way, but I do know that if I include dark elements, it needs to be something that's related to the focal points, or it needs to be something that I'm really designing into it so that it doesn't change the contrast or change the composition. That, that again is something that you really have to pay attention to. If you have a lot of contrast in your values in certain places, it can have a lot of weight. Whereas you may have had a really balanced composition beforehand and then put in this like really striking black in an area that can't support that kind of visual weight, then it can throw off your composition. So you want to think about your values as you're working on your composition and figuring that out. 
But that is it for today. Hopefully at least some of that made a little bit of sense. I do have a link down in the description that'll take you over to my Patreon page, which is a wonderful way to help support me and this channel. So if you wanna throw a little bit my way to help me keep making these videos and make more artwork, that is a great place to do it. I do wanna give a huge thank you to all of my patrons, but that's it for today. So I will be back next, uh, or this Saturday with another video. So I'll see you guys then.